Cast all your prayers and burn the loving Jesus. Smile, smile, smile. Just like the flower blooming, you can be joyful in the Lord. Put a smile upon your face. Cheer up and sing together. Cast all your burdens on a loving Jesus. Smile, smile, smile. Oh. <laughs> This morning, I'd like to talk about whether we should get chemotherapy or not. Anti-cancerous medication or chemotherapy, of course, can kill your cancer cells. But because these treatments are all human-made, so they don't only kill cancer cells, but also they kill our T cells, which are very important. in our body. These days, they say there is a medication which, uh, which kills the only cancer cells, they say, but, you know, once doctors use these medication, then actually it's not what they said. They also kill different cells as well. So they don't have great effect. Of course, through anti-cancerous treatment, you can kill all the cancer cells. We don't deny the fact. So in case of most, you know, so in you know, those um, most successful treatment, of course, they can kill all of your cancer cells. But even though they kill all the cancer cells in your body, every day in our body, we form cancer cells. That's the dilemma. Even though we, you know, those anti-cancerous medication kills all the cancer cells in our body, we will have cancer cells in our body anyway. So we cannot say this medication is successful or not because uh, these cancer cells will come again, again, and again. The very core question of this cancer is that can we kill these cancer cells in our body or not? That is the question. Because we will have cancer cells in our body all the time. Even though those anti-cancerous cancer cells, I mean, those medication kills the cancer cells, few days later you will have those cancer cells in your body. So if you say you have a successful treatment with that chemotherapy or anti-cancerous medication, then it means you also killed your T cells. So that is not really 
successful. You know, the standard of our modern medication is our immune system. If our immune system went goes down, then they can't, those doctors don't give anti-cancerous treatment. They, so they do know that the, our an, uh, immune system is very important. Let's say our cancer, I mean, let's say the tumor was eight centimeters. You know, those cancer, those tumors, you know, they are getting smaller and smaller. But then, you know, our lymphocyte, our immune system goes down as well. So doctors carefully look into our immune system and then they continue those anti-cancerous treatment. Sometimes, you know, hospitals, uh, doctors, they stop giving us um, an anti-cancerous treatment. When? When is that? When? When our immune system went down, they don't give us that anti-cancerous treatment because they know that our immune system is more important. So they know this concept. If they have this concept, if they know this, they need to boost up our immune system. They better boost up our immune system than giving anti-cancerous treatment. Let's say you get a cancer. It means your immune system failed to kill cancer cells. So if you want to be really successful, you have to boost up your immune system. That is the philosophy of New Start. New Start, we don't deny modern medicine. Of course, I study very hard on conventional medicine these days as well, but I choose the different method. I have a different approach. I don't deny those conventional modern medi medicine. I have those data. I have those information based upon conventional medicine. So I have to, you know, you have to, you also need to have a good understandings in modern medication, in modern, modern medicine. Yes, we can kill all the cancer cells through those medication. Now let's say your immune system was okay, and then as you receive those anti-cancerous medication, your immune system you know, goes down. Let's say before your immune system went totally down, your cancer cells are gone, then that is wonderful. Is that good? Or let's say, you know, it, that case, uh, our immune system went down and our cancer cells went down. Is that good? Or, you know, you have your white blood cells or uh, up or your immune systems are very activated and then your cancer cells going down, which is better? You know, you want to keep your immune system up and then, you know, th kill those cancer cells. That's a lot better. So the philosophy is different. We have the same foundation. Yes, we conventional medicine and new start, we have the same idea, but we have a different approach. Should we kill the cancer cells more or should we boost up the immune system more? When you I boost up your immune system, your cancer cells die faster and well. So let's think about this.
you know, modern medicine doctors, when they give those anti-cancerous treatment, they have this dilemma. Let's say, you know, there are the tumor, cancer, that was like seven centimeters, and they started anti-cancerous treatment, and then the, the size of this tumor gets smaller and smaller. But at a certain point, this tumor, the size of this tumor doesn't get smaller. These are very common situations. Then why is that? Long ago, doctors believed that you know, those tumor, those are all cancer cells. You know, thousands and billions of cancer cells are all mixed up. Now, those thousands of cancer cells are in that, you know, tumor. Doctors back in old time, they thought those cancer cells are the same. So if they're all same, you know, when if this one cell dies, then the other cell should die. Now, doctors now have dilemma. Why? Because some cancer cells die, but the other cancer cells don't die. So that was the question. So they took the, you know, cancers, the tumor, and then they opened up and they examined. And they found out that these cancer cells are all different. They're of all different character. Let's say, you know, we have brothers and sisters, our siblings, right? Our siblings are all different. It's like the same way with the cancer cells. Those cancer cells are all different. You know, let's say siblings, they're, you know, let's say some brother is very kind, you know, humble, and the other one is very strong character. Let's say my second daughter, she is very strong. But the my first one, she's very kind, naive. They're different. It's like the same way. Our cancer cells are different. So some good, let's say good, cancer cells, you know, as soon as they receive the anti-cancer treatment, they die. But then, what is left? Yes, all those very strong cancer cells are left. Now, before I go further on this, Let's imagine that your all of your cancer cells are all good. Then if you receive that anti-cancerous treatment, you will have a successful treatment because those cancer cells will all die. And doctors think, hmm, this guy will not have cancer cells anymore in his body. Then you know that is very successful. Then doctors will say, you are cured. You know, they can say, you're cured, you're overcame. Now, don't worry about this. And the patients say, oh, thank you, doctor. That's the number one qu case. Now, the better than this case is, this second case, you know, all the malignant tumor has the stage. First, second, third, fourth stage. You know, first one is the beginning, and the last one is the fourth stage. So we have those first, second, third, fourth stage. Now those cancer specialists fi found out that there is a zero state stage. This is not benign tumor, that is malignant tumor. But then there's a state that these cancer cells are not spreaded. That's we call this zero stage cancer. Let me draw a picture.
Okay, that's the uh, the cancer, the tumor. That's the tumor, the black dot. Now there is a cover around the tumor. That's the character of the zero stage cancer. Because of the cover, the cancer's tumor is not going to be spreaded. But anyway, the, can the tumor is malignant. So, you know, doctors can cut them off. For example, you have breast cancer and you're zero stage, and then you know they can just take it out. Then that's very successful. They just take it out, and then they cut, cut it and open. You know, when it becomes from zero stage to the first stage, You know, then the cell, you know, popped out, and now it's spreaded. Then that's the first stage. Then there's no cancer cell, you know, popped out from the cover. Then that's the zero stage. You know, they cut it and opened, and they examined. Then this cancer cell hasn't been spread it out, then you know that is going to be 100% successful operation. So you know, when you are found, when you are in the zero stage and your all tumor cells are all good, you know, good, you know, cancer cells, then you can have a successful treatment. Please don't misunderstand those anti-cancerous treatment Sometimes you can have a successful operation. And doctors say, oh, you're so lucky. And your friends say, oh, you're so lucky, you know, you're so blessed. You're so fortunate, girl. You know, and it's like, hey, let's have a party. And then, you know, you guys go out and drink. And then you guys have like, you know, like steak, barbecue party. You know, you're so relieved. You don't worry about that anymore. Well, that kind of ideas are all around, all around this world. It means, wow, I'm done with my cancer. You know, they don't have any ideas that that's the beginning they don't have n they have no idea they they had a dreadful start now those people think they got cancer because they're unlucky they're unlucky they're so unlucky that they got a cancer but then now they're so lucky that they are done with cancer these are their ideas. You have to be out of this worldly thinking. Even though you feel like you're done with your cancer, you have to realize that that's the beginning. Then you have to sit and pon you have to th think that, hmm, why did I have a cancer? Why did I get a cancer? If you just say, oh, I was so unlucky. If you just say, oh, I was so unlucky to have a cancer, then that is not, you know, rational thinking. It's not about luck. It's not about luck. It's about your lifestyle. You had problems in your lifestyle. You had no proper environment. There was no spark. You were so stressed. That is the point. You have to have this conclusion. Hmm, it was not, th oh, okay, so it was not all about the luck, but because of this and this and that, I got a cancer. Then I'm going to change my lifestyle. Then, yes, you will be done with your cancer. 
But if you finish with your party, barbecue party, then you are starting again. Alcohol. Let's say this person who got zero stage cancer, his T cells are very weak, not so activated. And that's why he got zero stage cancer. Now, his T cells are very weak, but then if you drink, you know, those alcohol really seriously weakens your T cells. And then now you have barbecue party. If you have high fat diet, of course, it'll help you to get diabetes. But this animal fat will change your cover membrane of your T cells. So if you have barbecue party with a lot of alcohol, it means you want to weaken your T cells. So even though you have no cancer cells in your body now, but then you will have it back maybe two years later or so. And then you got, you know, um, waist pain or something, spine pain. And then later you find out that, you know, your cancer was spread it out through your spine. There are many patients are like that. And then some doctors can say, oh, we found it, you know, uh, luckily it is found in your first or second stage. Then, you know, it becomes your luck again. And they say, wow, that's wonderful. And then your, your friends will say, oh, you're so lucky. I mean, two times in a row, you're so lucky. And then you say, yes, yes, of course, that's me. You know, and then you live whatever you wanted to, you know, live, you know, for three years, may, maybe later. And then you cough and you go to the hospital and they say you have lung cancer. You know, some people live like this. You know, some of you, most of you have lived this life here. Okay, so let's have then anti-cancer treatment. Let's have some chemotherapy. Then your cancer cells won't, you know, listen to that anti-cancer treatment. And then, you know, you find this place, new start place. This is not about luck. This is not about you're lucky or not. You know, some people watch same TV program, EBS, that I am on. Some people say, that's so funny. Sang Lee's lecture is so funny. His way is not going to work. Some people say that. Everybody has different ideas. They all have different ideas. According to their thinking, you know, they all hear different voices. Me, myself, is the same way. If I don't believe God, if I'm just a normal doctor, I will just say, hmm, yeah, right, you're right. I would say the same thing. You have to go beyond your position, and then you want to believe whatever you want to believe. But you have to be open up to believe what the truth is. You have to accept what the truth is. By the way, so those cancer, those strong cancer cells will survive. So even though you were, you were successfully operated, but you have high possibilities 
to have a second attack. So modern medicine says you are successfully operated, you have a wonderful result and so and so, but it doesn't mean you are going to live a successful, um, healthy life. Unless if your lifestyle doesn't isn't changed, you will have you will have the possibilities to have second attack. Let's talk about the cancer transference. Some people say some people are so lucky that they don't have um, cancer. They don't have cancer spreaded, but some people are so unlucky so that their cancers got spreaded. That what's the difference? Some people, their cancer cells are in dormant state. And those cancer cells don't grow even. But some people, they had a very small cancer, you know, those tumor. But then those tumors, you know, are propped out and they spread it out. Is that because of luck? No. I can surely say it's not true. Why? Because scientists recently, they carefully looked into it and there was they found the z gene which accelerates or which helps the cancer cells spread it let's say you have a breast cancer now you have this program in your cancer cells you know even though those genes are changed into cancer cells. There is a gene which um, suppresses, which produces this substance to suppress, to spread it out, to spread out. Let's say this person smokes and this person got stressed all the time and can't sleep. So genes, you know, those genes are getting turned off. And those, you know, 40 something kinds of carcinogenous substances damages your genes. And those your you know your normal cells have difficulties to survive. If they want to survive, then they have to be changed. You know, naive good person shouldn't become you know like a gangsters to survive. Okay, uh, to survive in that kind of bad situation, those good, you know, kind um, cells, naive cells, turn to bad cells. They change into bad cells. But originally, they are not supposed to be changed. You know, in your genes, do you know what kind of in your cells, do you know what kind of genes you have? Yeah, there is a gene to stop there is a gene to stop you to change into bad cells or cancer cells. You know, these this gene is a little different. There is a gene also 
not to be changed into cancer cells. So God programmed all those kind of stages. God programmed all these kind of programs in your genes. If I were God, then I would say, yeah, you smoke and you drink all the time and you're stressed all the time, then whatever, and you, know, you can just get a cancer. But then even though we try so hard to get a cancer, but then God still gives us this love to protect us. So God put this gene to suppress, to be changed into cancer cells. There's a gene There's a gene in our body to suppress to become a cancer cell. Our creator never gives up. Now let's look at our gene map. That's number 17 chromosome. Up there, there's P53 gene. That P53 gene, that pro uh, this gene produces tumor suppressor protein. So if this gene produces tumor suppressor protein, then this goes to this cell, which wanted to be changed into cancer cell, say, please come down, please come down, please don't be changed into cancer cells. You know, it says like, okay, you can be benign tumor, but please don't be malignant tumor, you know? So that's what P53 gene does. So when your P53 genes are turned off, then this lung cell, for example, will be changed into malignant tumor. Now, next stage is the um, transfer. And then God says, oh, please don't, tra don't transfer. And then God, you know, touches, clicks this gene to produce not to spread out. But if that gene is turned off, then you have cancer transfer. So when you have a, a anti-cancerous tr uh, anti-cancerous treatment, after a few or after several treatments later, three or four stages later, let's say you've been you've had a very nice result, but then all of a sudden, your cancer is all spread it out. Why? Now you have to understand this. So no matter what kind of state you are at right now, you know, I know most of you, uh, your cancer is all spread it out. It means your anti-cancer spreading gene are turned off. Now let's say once if your cancers are spread it out, then it means your cancers are going to be spread it out all the time? No. If your anti-spreading, anti-cancer spreading genes are turned on, then your cancers will not be spread it out. What kind of situation is that? Yes, when you practice new start, your cancers are not going to be spread it out. So when you practice new start really well, those turned off genes will be turned on. So when your P53 genes are turned on, it will produce tumor suppressor protein. That 
then the cell which received this tumor suppressor protein, the cell will share that protein to the next cell. And then, you know, other cells will be all be normal, and then, you know, those tumor will be, will turn into the normal state again. So you will be healed. So New Star Practice, actually, we want to help and cooperate with God because God originally gave us this kind of systems. So when we receive the spark and practice this New Star, it means we are supporting, we are helping God to work on our body. There is very clear logic. You know, modern medicine, they don't have this clear logic. You know, if you keep receiving this kind of anti-cancerous or chemotherapy treatment, then, you know, it crumbles down and crumbles down. The Bible says the Babylon is crumbling down. They have no truth there, and that's why it's crumbling down. Now we're at right before the stage. Now this modern medicine, they can tell that they're going to crumble down. Those doctors already know. Those doctors sense this risk. You know, they know that they can't continue using this, this kind of treatment. So those intelligent, smart doctors, they know that the genes got a problem. then they know that instead of killing cancer cells, we have to find, we have to find a way to boost up our immune system. But then they don't want to accept this new start. So they study to find a way to restore our genes. Now that is the goal for them. So right now, you know, best pharmaceutical company, they invest their money to find some medication to, to boost up, to restore our immune system. And they're, you know, thinking about how to restore the genes. So these days they call this gene therapy. The purpose of this gene therapy is for doctors, doctors taking out those um, changed genes and then restore and rearrange the gene sequence and put it back into human body. We do have this kind of treatment. For example, you know, there, there is a white lymphocyte. And some of the genes cannot, uh, some, of, some of the cells cannot make lymphocyte. So they have to live in a germ-free state. So they take some of the lymphocyte from people and they took this white blood cell to this patient, to patient's white blood cell, and then they'll get better. You know, those patients, you know, stay and stay in and a septic room. Now that case, we can say, you know, that's successful. You know, these patients, when they were born, originally they didn't have that kind of genes. So, and that's why, you know, doctors take those genes from a healthy person and put it into these uh, patients' body. 
you know, these, you know, children, some of these, chi uh, some of these patients' children, they didn't have these kind of genes originally. But, in it, you know, for them, it is natural. So even though doctors put those uh, white blood cell to these, you know, children's body, but then they go away. Why? Because they were born without them. So it means doctors didn't treat them with a original cause. Let's say autoimmune disease. Wh what's the problem with autoimmune disease? T cells, genes got changed and the T cells got changed. So those T cells attack, you know, your body. Then, you know, doc do you know what doctors think? Those doctors who is interested in genetic therapies, do you know what do they think? What's the problem? Change the T cells, change the genes in T cells are the problem. And they think how can they change these, change the cells, change the genes in T cells. You know, those genes are changed because those base sequences are changed. So, you know, they take those genes out and they will rearrange those genes and put it back. You know, those medicine will develop. Then please do not think that, oh, then that's going to be a wonderful way. It's not going to work. Now, this person's T cell was normal cells. But then because of the situational, you know, prob problems, uh, marriage, difficult marriage life, or difficult in-laws, you know, situation, whatever the situations, you know, your T cells got changed. That's why, that's how you got T cells. Now, let's say doctors just, you know, put the, change the genes, you know, and then rearrange the genes and put it back. But then, you know, those are situations still there. So, you know, your genes will be changed again. So the way we think, we don't want to try, we don't want to try to get rid of those original cause. Now, new start, yes, we do accept those skill, those technology, but that is not the real solution for the problem. If you want to receive those kind of treatment, you have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars. Let's say Dr. Huang in Korea succeeded in his experiment. You know, to make that stem cell, it takes a lot of money. Now, you know, our government and he took a lot of money to make that stem cells. You know, all the best doctors and best scientists, they're the best scientists and they work together, but they failed to make the stem cells. They were the best team. Dr. Wang had the best team. They worked years, two years, three years. You know, they worked three for three or, you know, four years. You know, if they are going to make that stem cell for everybody, you know, you can make that in a, you know, you can make those stem cells in a factory. Do you remember um, Dr. Huang's friend? Yes, Mr. Kim. Kim Son Jong. Yeah, there's no one like him. He was a very skillful guy. He was a very skillful guy. Yeah, let's say Mr. Kim made one stem cell and, you know, the other scientist made another stem cells. You know, it's not going to be made in the factory. Now, you worked so hard to make this stem cell and, you know, you put it back into, you know, a patient's body. But then patients will, you know, the, the genes 
in the body will be changed anyway. That why do you spend so much money on this ridiculous treatment? Why don't you just practice? You know, you don't need to pay a lot of money. This is so clear. So, you know, to have this kind of seminar, I have to give up on the desire to make money. Now, let's summarize. Modern medicine and technology, even though they say they have a successful operation and a successful treatment, it is not essentially true. Yes, they can have a successful operation, but essentially it is not going to be successful continuously. You know, when they first found out this tumor, the diameter was about five centimeters. So so let's say this patient, he got chemotherapy. And then his first chemotherapy was five weeks chemotherapy was very successful, let's say. So those five centimeters tumor cell became 1.5 centimeters. Then, if you push up this chemotherapy, if that 1.5 tumor cells becomes zero centimeters, then that's a successful. But let's say those 1.5 centimeters, uh, this size of tumor cells are very strong cells, then they won't die. And then if they use very strong medication, you know, then your immune system will go down. So you have to wait for a while to recover your immune system. Let's say those 1.5 tumor cells are very strong. Originally, they were strong, but now they became stronger even. Why? Because they put up with the first chemotherapy. They are the warriors. Whatever the living creatures are, if you go through those difficult times, doesn't matter your pl plants or the animals or human beings, they got stronger after the trial. Cancer cells, yes, of course. They're more like it. Let's say, hey, come on, the first, uh, first anti-cancerous treatments, whatever it is, come in, I'll put up with you. You know, even the worms, whatever the living creatures, They fight to survive. Now they are strong and stronger. They were strong and they are stronger. They are the warriors now. So that was the first chemotherapy, first anti-cancerous treatment. So because of the anti-cancerous treatment, your immune system got down. Now, your immune systems are down, but then those cancer cells, do how do you think those cells feel? Yes, this is our world now. And then, then you know, doctors, of course, postpone um, the second session because y you need to boost up your immune system. Then those 1.5 cancer cells, 
will grow up to three centimeters without any kind of disturbance. And those three centimeters tumor cells will receive second treat session of anti-cancer treatment. Now those three centimeters, they're the warriors, remember? So they are very strong. And the doctors already know this fact. So they don't use the same medication. They don't use the same medication from the first session. So they use more of medication and stronger as well. So more and stronger medication. It means you will kill, your damage your immune system more. Now doctors are using those stronger and more medication and then the size will be smaller two centimeters let's say but your immune system will be damaged really bad you know but because your immune system is so damaged you know they have to wait like standby Let's say your immune systems are totally, you know, broke down. Now these two centimeters are worse than 1.5 centimeters. These two centimeters, you know, they're <laughs> worst. They're the worst. And they have many experiences in fighting those medication. And they are now very... They are just ready for anything because they are so strong and worst. You know, those cancer cells who are meant to be dead, they're all dead. But those who are alive, they are the worst. They are the worst. You know, while they're waiting, they become like four centimeters. The size got really bigger. You know, you got very difficult, you know, times. And every time you receive the anti-cancer treatment, you know, you got okay result. But, you know, your body condition and you, your, your situation got really low down. But then the size... You know, you can say, okay, the size got smaller, but then quality got really worse than before. You can feel like the size got smaller, but then you have to realize that the cells got stronger and became worse. You know, patients always talk about the size. Anyways, they're waiting for the third session, so they became four centimeters. And then now your immune systems got up and, you know, you started third session. Now, four centimeters, those are really the worst one, okay? Remember that. So the third session, of course, they're going to use the worst, I mean the strongest, strongest medication. Well, that's the rea reality. That's the reality in your treatment. They can't just help it. They have to use the strongest. You know, some of them, some of you guys here, you got like 52 times, 52 times of anti-cancer treatment. <laughs> wow, you are something, you know. And then you're still alive, right? You're something. You're so blessed, hey? Okay, this is the third session. Now the result. 
you might have a very strange result because uh, you have been used uh, the strongest medication you know the size got little smaller like three centimeters let's say now those three centimeters the size those cells oh uh, they 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 are deadly they are very strong they're deadly No, they won't care. They are the deadly cells. Well, let's say, you know, if the size got smaller into like three centimeters, that's a actually a very good result. Sometimes, you know, the size doesn't get smaller, stays like four centimeters. Sometimes the tumor got bigger even. There are three, you know, chances, three, four, or five centimeters. Now, let's say the size got bigger, then the doctors would say, well, the medication doesn't work anymore, so, you know, uh, we have nothing to do with you, so please go home and enjoy your life, you know, and eat whatever you want to. But you know what? Uh, by the time, uh, y you, you couldn't even feel the taste. You couldn't even eat whatever you wanted to eat by that stage. So first, second, three third time, the pain, the suffering were the worst pain you could ever have because you're killing all the cells. You know, those substances are killing all of the cells, good and bad. So you, you, you're so painful while you're having that kind of therapy, during the therapy. Now, let's say uh, your tumor cell, you know, they didn't change, the size didn't change, and then the four centimeters, then there are two kinds of doctors. You know, one kind of doctor says, well, you know, we have no effect, we have no result now. So you can stop here, or you can use... You can use undergo um, treat uh, medication. We haven't um, had the proof yet, but then you can use that kind of experimental medication. But if the size became three centimeters, doctors say, "Let's go on. Let's keep on doing it." Let's say your s tumor cells got three centimeters. The size got smaller, right? So doctors push you to do it again. And then, you know, you know, you have to wait before you get the fourth session because your immune system got down, so you had to you have to wait. Now, anyways, while you're waiting, those cancer cells, those tumor the size got bigger, five centimeters or uh, six centimeters. So originally in the beginning you had five centimeters, but then now you got six centimeters. Okay? It's not about the size only now, but it's about the quality. The quality got worse. And doctors say, you know, if you go further, um, it's not it's going to be meaningless. Or the other doctor will say, Well, let's do it, let's keep on doing. Some doctors And some doctors say, we have to keep on doing it or else you have only three months left. You know, if you do it, you have possibilities to extend three more months. Then, you know, they give you the choice. And then you, now you get into the fourth session.
in that case, there's no possible. Well, actually, that's the fifth session. You have no possibilities to recover there. Now you experience this kind of process, and then so three months earlier, you know you're you're a little you know okay, but three months later, you're you're totally you know down. You know what? But doctors did their best, and patients, of course, did their best. But this is the reality in our life. Yeah, they all do their best. They did as much as they can. Oh, that is good, right? Looks like good. Looks like there's no evil in it. But the result is so sad. Got a sad result. If the doctors didn't give him anti-cancer treatment when he had like five centimeters of tumor, then maybe he might have a chance to live longer. Now, by the time around there, patients, they can give up. You know, they... They refuse to have anti-cancer treatment, and they say, "Like I want, to, I, I'm gonna give up. I want to die now." If you lose your hope, those cancers will be spread it out. So strange. Why? Because the genes respond to meaning. Now, in you know, patients feel like, "Oh, well, if the medication, if the hospital, if the doctors can, you know, give me treatment." then, you know, I have no hope, then let's just die. Then, you know, you are so sure of your death, then your genes will take that meaning, and those cancer will be spread it out. But if somebody said, hey, don't give up, go to new start, and then if you realize that, oh, really, then I can have hope again, then, you know, your t genes will be turned on at that time. So if your P53 genes are turned on, then those, you know, cancer cells will die. If those genes are turned on, if those genes which helps not to spread the cancer, if those genes are turned on, then you can survive like this guy. You know, he, he, he was done back in all time. He had stomach cancer. He was done with his life. But now he's alive. So no matter how far you went or you are at, remember, if you give yourself to our Creator, if you give your jeans in our career's hand, you will be healed. <laughs> you know, even though I explain this way, I know some of you, some of you will still don't understand because you know you, you are so depressed you're so depressed because you have a cancer and you know these messages you know will maybe not influence you or get you get to you why because of the shocking news okay because of the shocking news that you get a cancer because you're so shocked that you get a cancer you don't really have clear mind to accept this message you know my talent I explain very difficult things into very easy way I can explain things easily but if you're mindless you can't hear 
this easy explanation. So during lunchtime, you know, they ask me these questions. Dr. Lee? Dr. Lee, and then... And then they start talking about their, you know, medical history. You know, that was about year 2000 to... Um, when was that? And, you know, and they start talking about their medical history and go on and on and on, you know, and so-and-so happened. So I went to this hospital, but I went this hospital, you know, better hospital, and so on and on and on. You know, I don't need to hear that kind of things. I don't care where, which hospital you go to. And then some patients, uh, they are so frustrated because they can't remember the, na the doctor's name. You know, and then, you know, I have to be patient. You know, you know hospital, wh which hospital it is going to be, or the w whoever the doctors are, doesn't matter. These are the result. So please, when you have a conversation with me, you know, please skip your medical history. You know, even though I give this kind of lecture, they say, oh, Dr. Lee, what am I going to do? Should I get chemotherapy? You know, things like that. I explained the reality of chemotherapy and anti-cancer treatment. Of course, the choice is yours. When you realize this truth, be calm and make your own decision. That is yours. You decide. Choice is yours. I explain the most successful, successful way in anti-cancerous treatment and the worst situation with anti-cancerous treatment, and I talked about the result from the new start. Now, I can only cheer you now. I can only cheer you. <laughs> Please, remember the proper environment and the spark. That is the greatest truth of our Creator. Truth doesn't lie to you. Truth will not hurt you. Now lastly, I'd like to conclude. I know you have this medical history that you got all the chemotherapy and anti-cancer treatment. I know those moments were very difficult. Those moments will, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're very painful. You know, I, I, you know, you were patient with those kind of treatment, and that's the gift from God. The patient, that's the gift from God. Now, you had that patience, right? You had that patience. Now, if you invest one-tenth one of patience that you had with anti-cancer treatment, Use this here, not even half. I'm not asking for half even. One-tenth of patients you had with like, anti-cancer treatment, if you use that here and you start, amazing things will happen here. So please, please, dear people, be successful in the hand of your Creator.